Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for the part 2 of the SNTS series where today I'm going to explain more like how to make this kind of dark ambience uh, that you can find in a lot of his production. So if you haven't, if you have missed the first part I will put the link in the description and here we are up here in the right corner. Go to check it, it's about the rhythm, the drums and today we're just going to focus on the ambience. So basically I record the whole tutorial on one way and I cut it so we're just going to go back where we left last time. So it might be a different kind of tone of voice and etc. So let's go back into the session. All right. And then now we're going to enter uh, in the ambience part. So here what I've done is I've put different kind of possibility to how you, you get your ambience uh, done. Uh, I don't recommend to use all of them in the same times. And one of the main things to do is basically uh, recycling you on elements. Well, what I mean by that is, for example, here I use the same uh, sound down this one. You see, same process. The only thing is, I I've throw it in a lot of reverb, as you can see, and it's become more like an ambience in the background. I filter it a little bit as well. So basically imagine you are starting your sound and the menu doesn't appear yet but you can use this like kind of um, as an ambience and then when you sound will come out this one the lead it, it will not sound weird because obviously you use the same uh, material just yeah filter it because you don't have to Because you have the LFO, it's even you see, it's like slightly moving and so adding variation. Same here, you could use uh, auto pan, it's really up to you. Uh, yeah, you're gonna see LFO is, you, is gonna be your best friend. Try to use the LFO as much as you can to add variation, but always be super gentle. Like, uh, obviously, you don't want like a, a kind of uh, you don't want something fast and with a lot of amount. You want something very slow and subtle, just to have this slight changement in the background. So yeah, that recycling is really good. You can see it's exactly the same parameter, and I just low pass filter because obviously I I don't want to take the frequency of the main lead, and I don't want to sound like the main lead. And just in the I drop it in echo and reverb always. Don't be afraid to go above 50%. Sidechain. And you got that. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the other one. Other way you can do uh, ambience is basically uh, using FM sound. One thing I recommend is like, to, this is not, you can do whatever, but playing like two not close to each other, it's very really nice to get this kind of dissonant effect. And I recommend as well to use uh, FM synthesis, whatever uh, plugin you're using. And here I use, so I use the triangle form if you go back to none. The main reason, if I go to the, the waveform with more harmonic, the FM is creating uh, this kind of noisy extra texture, you see? And in some case, I wouldn't mind because it's, it's giving this analog t taste. But in this case, I didn't want it because obviously it's gonna even add an extra noise to the ambience and it's gonna kind of mess up your ambience. And the key here as well, like I've just said, is modulation. And as you can see, very slow modulation. So here I'm modulating the pitch. So you get this kind of tension. It's like a very basic scent, but because of this pitch modulation, you can get this tension like you have in a horror movie. Like, a, I don't know how to explain. You could use stuff like the shepherd effect as well. 
But you see the pitch is going up and down but very gently. And same go with the FM modulation. You can see it's very shaping very slowly. And the oscillator 2 is the same, just some it on down, a bit detuned, and same FM and nothing else really. Just having a LFO sine wave, usually it's working well. And very slight amount to yeah the FM1, the pitch. Just experiment. And here what I've done is I use the LFO to to um modulate the LFO one rate. So if you check here, like that's the LFO where it's like now it's going very slow and then super fast. And then when it's on the extreme, it's like slow. And then you can see how it's moving super fast again and then slow. So that's nice to add movement. You can experiment, change the rate, you can different kind of you can put maybe random as well. Just experiment, try your own things, see what's working, why is, what what is not. And yeah, nothing. I didn't put filter. Could have put automation on the filter as well. But yeah, the thing here, the secret is again, is like just throwing your sound, your sound in a lot of reverb. And you can see like. So just saturation to make things a bit louder and reverb you can see like around 80% decay or more than 10 seconds and then filtering same with the LFO to add a bit of variation an EQ I add this resonant frequency so that's as well is about taste you know because this kind of you kind of lose a little bit of the spirit of the scent but on the other end you you gain a little bit in clarity by removing this resonant frequency so it's just about choice what you feel is right i prefer to cut it like this i don't have this resonance and then i put auto pan i didn't use it but same you can always like i said before add auto pan to make things move left and right around your head and yeah the thing is with the ambience is like like i said before it's it's most of the time you will be always throwing things in a lot of reverb and it kind of sounds easy like this but you have always to be very careful with what you are throwing in the reverb and it's all about the scent that you're choosing the scent selection how you design your preset and as well if you use perk what kind of sound you're gonna use to throw in a lot of reverb and yeah like i said before the main advice don't overdo it don't take too much it's better to have like two three who each one have his purpose, maybe one more in the mid, maybe one more in the mid-high and more in the high. Like a noisy stuff, more like a airy scent and more like a mm, kind of a mid-range, a low scent. It's up to you. So here by the key is the... Oh, sorry, this one. is the same. It's basically the same uh, patch. And I've just played a uh, lower note than this one so when I get And yeah, one thing is important as well is will be about you mixing, how you mix your ambience together and like finding the that's one of the hard things as well, is like finding the right at which level you have to put your ambience. That's kind of hard. There is no really like uh, there is no tips I can give you and it's just a matter of taste and always it's a hard task. It's always like finding the right balance between having you ambience feeling full and powerful. And so for that, it has to be loud, but not too loud because if you put your ambience obviously too loud, you're gonna lose all the punch of your kick and all the driving rhythm. So it's about finding the right balance. Kind of other kind of scent I've called buzzing scent. It's kind of so it's just a simple note. And because of this, 
and F4 as well. It's acting on the pitch here. It's kind of acting like kind of a vibrator, and I've used it as well to modify to uh, automate the wrap, the wrap, <laughs> the warp. Sorry. And you have as well here the LFO2 slowly modulate the pitch and the warp as well and the filter frequency just to add movement. Honestly, for this kind of techno ambiance, LFO is your best uh, friend. Use always as much as LFO as you can. Honestly, depend on what, you're, what kind of stuff you are using, but and try to automate slightly the most things possible because it's what is going to give really give life to you. Sand, if I bring everything down, it's just a boring, oh, boring scent. And then, we're much more moving. And I, I didn't put, I could have put a auto pan as well. So then just some EQ always, trying to always getting rid of frequency you don't really need. Saturation just to make things a bit uh, louder. Reverb just to, you know, and reverb. It's I would even recommend before to start to shape the sound straight away. Drop a reverb with 80% of the dry weight and around more than 10 seconds uh, of the decay. And then auto filter as well. Here is gonna uh, go up and down with. Uh, the eye cut and here same so here same with the EQ I cut this one because it was a bit too resonant you lose a little bit of the character but on the other end your sound is a bit more clean let's say I don't know so that same is about choice you know if you So you lose a bit of character, but on the other end you, you gain a little bit in clarity, so it's about choice what you wanna do. Alright, another thing you can use to make uh, ambience is, um, I've called it granular, so one is granular synthesis, which is basically, you just draw a sample, uh, I'm not gonna make a tutorial about how to use that, but one thing I can recommend again is using LFO and honestly it's just playing with with the parameter but i wanted you know this kind of very crispy eye uh, kind of sound and granular synthesis is really nice for that because it's playing a lot of small samples very quickly so yeah file position really nice to put LFO because if you don't put LFO it's kind of steady but again put the LFO the LFO is here and you can just like uh, change to sample and hold or random up to you and then see the same filter and delay reverb and this is it's gonna be about which sample you use uh, there is no secret, it's like, yeah, just experiment, but that's one technique you can use. Or you can get something similar with uh, inside Ableton or any like scent when you, so here the envelope is basically in loop mode and and here it's playing like a long notes and the thing is like, it's kind of acting like a LFO envelope. And you can can get this kind of similar granular kind of effect uh, without using this. Obviously, you can as well use the LFO. I use like this, but you can maybe use use random. Same than before. Experiment with LFO. I just wanted to show you like the envelope on this mode can be really nice to get this kind of granular texture that you can add it's and after it's the same eh? EQ uh, distortion reverb I'm not gonna bypass all the time because it's all the time the same effect and same purpose uh, 
auto filter and EQ. Here is the same auto filter modulating to add variation. So granular two I show you. Then noise. So noise obviously is in this. You have two way. So like I said before, recycling the on the the previous ones, previous song that you used already. So here I've I've took my drum, my ads, which are here, and I just throw them in a lot of reverb here. And then filter them a little bit and then sidechain them and that's it. Oh, you have your noise and usually if you choose the right hearts, is your hearts are good. This should sound good in your sound. So that's the same. That's up to you to judge how much you want. I, I would recommend as well to uh, automate the volume along the track. So maybe at some part on the track, the noise a bit more prominent, and on the other part of the track, maybe it will be the best sound. So yeah, I really recommend as well to automate. Uh, the game, but that I will recommend more to do it in the arrangement rather than like now when you are creating a sound and second way is basically to just use uh, Noise so it can be a sample or just operator and Maybe a band pass or um, A low cut I mean I pass filter with the LFO modulating And then in a lot of reverb and filter and sidechain, same. That's nothing new for, I think most of you knew about that already. Before to start to talk about the random, I'm just gonna talk about the noise amp. So that's a good way to have, to add this very noisy percussive rhythmic uh, kind of sound on top. So that's a rack I've made, I will put the link in the description, it's, it's really nice to get this kind of crackling effect. You can use a noise as well. And you have this render macro which is basically, instead of having something that's very steady, obviously you can mix crackle and you can use crackle and you can change the pitch. And you can obviously go inside and change the wave table. Uh, wait. Yeah, that's really up to you. If you want to find out more about this rock, I will put the link in the description. And so the last two elements, I've called them random. So last way to, I mean last way, another way to create this kind of ambience moving in the background is basically using perks that you're gonna percussion that you're gonna allow in a, you're gonna send in a lot of reverb and delay as usually. So here is the trick what I've done. Uh, they are playing the same note, but I use this random MIDI note, which is basically gonna make it play like different kind of MIDI note. rather than having like something too monotonous. And so I have two different, and you can see here the length of the, for this kind of random perk in the background, I like to use a uh, polymeter uh, rhythm, which means like, uh, I, I will use different uh, lengths. So this way they will never kind of play uh, each, eight bar will be different if I can say so. So for example, you can see this one is like a, a six or it's a multiple of three, of three bar, rather than uh, this one, it's 40, so it's a multiple of two basically. And and that way they will always play a different, they will never like, each eight bar will be different, yeah, just, there is a lot of tutorial about polymeter if you want to check on the internet. 
so yeah I've done like this still is the same process and a lot of reverb a lot of filter to avoid to get rid of the frequency I've, I've used my Padmaker rack for this time and yeah basically uh, I don't know if I've done no I haven't done any automation on this one it's on the other one but yeah the way I've done it is like kind of having like a, a long send uh, not playing a little bit like for two bar and then I stop but with the reverb tail it's like still a little bit and then after after six bar playing again and that's obviously now it's straight away but you can use auto pan and make it move around or maybe maybe at you know this one you can put it maybe more on the left this one more on the right and then like just automate and duplicate along the track to have it hitting a different position in your sorry stereo field and then you have this random 2 which is more like something similar that I've done and I've kind of recycled this one as well like using the same process chain it's just different kind of perk a bit more metallic this one and and I make it play like at different uh, note which is basically a bit like what what the MIDI device is doing but uh, in a different way this is like according to the root note they're gonna play like upper upper note or down note rather than just like to just to get a different feeling along the track so yeah really subtle but yeah the casing is here is like I said it's to avoid to bring everything together trying to resist and trying to be very selective with yourself and say okay this I don't need this is useless maybe keep it for another track and just keep it like yeah I would say maybe three or four ambience and just make sure like things are clear And yeah, after in the arrangement, maybe trying to focus on how you can this ambience, like maybe sometimes bring one more in the front than the other. You can either use LFO or you can use automation, use uh, auto pan or just the, the pan to kind of as well make them moving on the left or on the right. Using this random perk in the background, it's really helpful as well to kind of add a different kind of uh, texture along the track. And yeah, and then about the master, I will do another video because it's already a long video and how I process that, process it. And yeah, I think that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching, Sky. I hope you like it. Do not hesitate to like and subscribe. And see you soon, guys. Bye bye.